Hi, in this video we're going to look at the uh, analysis of the hormone data as we did in class where we're comparing a new uh, attempt uh, at an assay to measure a certain hormone level in a specimen compared to a gold standard reference assay where the reference might be very expensive and time consuming and the test might be cheaper and quicker. We want to see if this new cheaper quicker test will give us the same result as the reference. Um, in this uh, example we're going to do a regression analysis including some transformations of the data. So here we'll come up here and say fit y by x and we want to see if our test, uh, our new test uh, assay can predict the results of the gold standard so we're going to use that as the predictor and the reference assay is the gold standard response to see if we can get our test result as close as possible to the reference. And we'll fit that line. Here we see the scatter plot of the data. Add the line to it. It looks like a, a decent regression. The, the points have a fairly strong correlation, a strong positive correlation. Um, and you can see we have a slope that's close to 1. We have an almost perfect prediction from the test to the reference. It's just 0 0.04 off. If it had been a perfect uh, uh, prediction that would have a slope of 1. The R squared, as you can see, is 0.915, so n almost 92% of the variability in the reference assay is actually explained by the test assay. If you come down here to the um, estimate of the slope, again it's 0.96 with a very small standard error relative to the size of the slope. So we see that the this results in a very large t statistic and a very small p-value so we reject the null hypothesis of beta equals zero and we say that this is a significant positive relationship. Of course with regression analysis we should check our assumptions and we can do that very easily by looking at a plot of the residuals. And here they are here, and you can see this is somewhat heteroscedastic in terms of the variance not being constant here. It's a very small variance for low values of the test assay. They're, we're very close to the um, predicted value, the, the uh, reference value. For very high values of the test assay, we somewhat, we're somewhat farther away from the reference value, so the residuals are higher for high values of test than they are for lower. So let's do some transformations and see if we can correct this problem. Um, from class we don't see any obvious patterns in the data so we will begin by transforming the uh, the reference assay um, and just to see if we can see any patterns. We'll start off by doing a log of the reference and we'll just create a new column called log reference and we can add a, a formula there to change every value of reference. We do that simply by coming up here to uh, formula in the name of the column and we can pick transcendental and pick log again unless otherwise indicated this is a log base e so we'll pick logarithm and then we just simply have to take test so we're taking the log or reference we're taking the logarithm of the reference variable now the, every value in the log or the ln ref column should actually be the natural logarithm of the reference column and let's actually add a couple more let's add the um, the square of the reference formula and we'll just say reference times reference so that should be the square that's not quite the square what did we do wrong there oh I said plus let's delete that times reference there we go that's now the product or the square of every value in reference and let's add the square root Now we can add the formula. I'm right clicking on the head of the column and we say formula and we can simply say square root reference and then come over here and say 2. And that should now be the square root of every item in the reference column. So now let's do some regressions and now see if we see any of the obvious patterns for rules for transforming x. So we can actually do several of these at once and look at all of the plots. Oh, I've forgotten one. Let me go back and do uh, one over. And let's create the formula for that and say that we want 1 divided by reference. So this is the inverse of the reference, 1 over the reference value. Now we can fit the test as our factor and pick each one of these different responses and it will do a linear regression for test versus logarithm of a reference, test versus the square, test versus the square root, and so on. And here are all of our figures. 
So this one, this is the logarithm. Now this actually does appear to be similar to one of the patterns that we saw uh, may indicate a transformation for x. You can see it's tightly clustered here and sort of linear in the first portion of the data and then it slowly arcs with greater spread later on. So that might indicate that if we now take a logarithm transform of the x's, we might get a straight line. Here in the, when we looked at the square of the reference and compared it to the test, this, although it does appear sort of linear down here, there's a strange sort of tail out here, and this doesn't really appear similar to any of the patterns that we saw for possible transformations of x to get a linear fit. When we took the square root of the response variable, uh, we sort of see a pattern that might be consistent with taking the um, the square root of x now, but it doesn't really appear to be as very strong curvature as we saw in the example in class. And then as the inverse, again, this does appear like it could be uh, a pattern where we could transform the x and take 1 over the x as well and also get a linear pattern, but uh, this curvature appears to be very, very strong, perhaps too strong. Let's come back here and we'll start with this logarithm since this does appear actually the most similar to the pattern that we saw for an ideal transformation of x to give us a linear pattern. So we thought that if we take the logarithm of x oops, actually let's indicate that it's the natural logarithm and then add formula and we can take transcendental log of test and now this variable now has the logarithm of the uh, test variable. So you can now see, let's now fit a y by x and we'll fit the logarithm of the test and compare that to the logarithm of the reference. And here we go. This looks actually very similar to a proper good linear regression with a scattering of a random scattering of the line of points around the line. Uh, our r squared has gone up from 91 to 93 the um, slope has actually gone down a little bit, so it, it is showing actually a slightly greater um, uh, difference between the test and the reference, but we do have a valid regression now. And as you can see, the p-value for the slope is definitely positive, so um, definitely greater than zero. Let's check our residuals. And here they are all scattered randomly about the line. The, that seems to be constant variance. I don't see any strong patterns. Um, and if we do a histogram of those residuals, save the residuals, and we can just double check the normality of those residuals. It's now saved the residuals here. We can come up and do distribution, look at the residuals. And there, there is a slight tail to the left, but generally and basically it does look normal mostly clustered around the middle with a sharp decline in either direction. So that's good enough to be a normal distribution. We'll say this is a valid regression of the logarithm on the test to the logarithm of the reference. Now if you uh, want to do any prediction and you wanted to try and predict what you think a value of the reference could be from a, any particular test value, you can just add the confidence curves for an individual and therefore you can now see that Anytime you get a 2.5 as the logarithm of the value of your test result, the logarithm of the reference is going to be between 2.028 and 3.056. So anytime, now you can sort of calibrate your test result and pick a range of plausible real values um, based on this regression. You can also see, because our line is we can now show that our slope, because it's slightly less than 1, our test value is actually slightly underestimating the true reference value. We might get a 2.5 as our test, but the real value is likely to be 2.528 and likely to fall between 2.028 and 3.056. Compare this to the confidence intervals for every possible line. And again, you can see that all the possible lines are within a much smaller region. So we have very good confidence that this is the true regression line, and this wider boundary represents the region in which we would expect 95% of the individuals to fall. So that's a run through doing transformations and doing uh, constructing a prediction and confidence intervals in JMP. Please add, add anything I, you think I may have missed to the comment box, and I'll see what I can add.